So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shudipa, and uh, my paper is about uh, how uh, perceived crime of uh, households um, affects early marriage in India. So as Kunal mentioned, this is also part of this project, women's work. Um, okay. So, um, so the objective is, as I mentioned, to look at how perception of crime in the locality uh, where the households live uh, impacts the decision to marry the uh, daughters and uh, as well as the um, sons of the households because this is uh, particularly because uh, in India, um, more than 80% of marriages are organized, arranged by the family. Um, yeah, so, so that's why in, the, in that context, it's very important to look at it. Um, we also look at both gender neutral and gender specific crimes in the locality. So we have information on um, whether there is theft in the locality, uh, robbery, attack, or uh, any kind of harassment, uh, uh, gender specific harassment. Uh, so these are reported by the household, so that's what we use. And we also explore the channels through which this relationship may hold. Uh, okay, so just to give you a little bit of background, I think that um, the importance of early marriage, why it's important, I don't have to motivate it. Um, the, the, the keynote speaker also has mentioned it. Um, Kunal has mentioned it in terms of the importance of it in, um, in terms of, uh, in the context of women's labor force participation. So, uh, I would just mention, um, if we look at the incidence of child marriage, then um, around half of the child bride uh, live in uh, South Asia. And when we look at India, despite several efforts made by national and international agencies, um, early marriage remains uh, pervasive. If you look at the um, statistics, 27% in 2015 16 uh, were married, uh, uh, girls uh, were married before. Um, the legal age, age of marriage, which is 18. Um, well, it has increased now, but when I did this study, it was 18. And uh, when we look at the recent data from 2019 and 21, it's 23%. So it has, the reduction is really about uh, four uh, percentage point. Um, and when we look at age at marriage, I mean, that, that there's a lot of um, uh, policies across India, uh, which are basically um, giving incentives to the parents so that they keep uh, cash transfer to parents so that they keep their daughters uh, in school um, and automatically there will be a reduction in age at marriage. But uh, despite all that, when we look at age at marriage in India, it's, in, um, um, it's actually increasing slowly, like one year per decade. Um, so that's the progress. Um, so yeah, so, so in this context, I think that it's important to look at different factors that are, um, th that are important for aged marriage and uh, child marriage. So uh, looking at the literature, there is a huge literature on child marriage, early marriage, generally focusing on uh, girls, girl-child marriage, because uh, even though there is uh, child marriage for uh, men as well, but I think the literature has mostly focused on women because I think the consequences are more serious for women. Um, yeah, so just to summarize, um, I have just um, categorized the literature into two uh, broad categories, like one looking at the determinants of early marriage and the, uh, the other looking at the consequences. So if we look at the determinants, the researchers have highlighted household poverty, parental education, uh, access to opportunities. So these are mostly relevant for um, early marriage of girls. And when we look at consequences, um, early and teenage marriage are found to be associated with uh, poor uh, human capital formation because um, in most of the countries they have found that early marriage leads to school dropout, which that means that there will be poor human capital formation and uh, which in turn affect the labor market uh, outcome of uh, the women. And uh, it's also found to be associated with ch child health and uh, maternal health. So, because early marriage generally uh, leads to early pregnancies, and um, which has adverse consequence on um, child health as well as maternal health. 
Um, so it's also found to be associated with high rates of domestic violence because the girls who are married um, at a tender age, they have um, lower agency, bargaining power. So yeah, so, it's, uh, so that's why it's found to be highly associated with domestic violence. Um, okay. So what is missing in the literature is that so uh, most of these papers they have uh, pointed out about the role of safety, uh, safety co concern. I think before uh, the uh, pre-lunch session we had a paper where uh, the researcher has mentioned about um, safety concern and women's labor force participation. So in this literature as well, they have mentioned about um, how uh, women's safety concern and uh, the value that our society places on women's chastity uh, may play a role um, in deciding the uh, uh, age of marriage of women. But um, if you look at empirical evidence, it's not, it's uh, mostly missing. So it's generally a, a conjecture. So we don't have any empirical studies um, giving evidence. So that's where I try to pitch in my study. Uh, that's where my contribution is. Okay, so these are the research questions that I try, try to answer. Is household's perception of crime in the locality associated with early marriage of girls? Um, we estimate this relationship for adolescent girls who were 12 to 16 years in the baseline. Um, we also look at different gender neutral crimes, how um, whether they have any impact, uh, does it they are dis disproportionately hurt young women than men of comparable age groups? So we also look at, um, we take a sample of boys who are 15 to 19 year old so that they are comparable with the girls. Uh, what are the, then we look at the mechanisms or channel behind the link between early marriage of girls and crime against women in the locality. Um, Okay, so how do we answer these questions? So we use a panel data from India Human Development Survey. It's a nationally representative survey of 41,000 households and around 215,000 individuals coming from all over India. And it has collected information on the same individuals and households in 2004-05 uh, and 2011-12. Um, and this uh, panel element allows us to look at crime against women in 2004-05 and to um, look at the um, outcome variables, observed outcome variables in 2011-12. Uh, and uh, we also use, um, um, so, so, so because of, uh, I should mention this, because of patrilocal residence system in India, uh, generally what happens when you have a panel survey, uh, in the follow-up round, the, uh, the women who are married, uh, they drop out of the sample because they move to a different households. But uh, in this survey, they have a tracking schedule so through which they have tracked most of the women and they have collected information on their... Um, marriages and um, um, the migration status, where they live and all that. So I use that information. Um, yeah, so you, I use information on crime against women in the neighborhood collected from households and use age at marriage to define early marriage or child marriage for adolescent girls aged 12 to 16 at baseline and unmarried. Uh, so this is the sample, just to uh, summarize, the final sample is uh, 12,000 uh, uh, female and around 11,000 male. And um, mm, when we look at the, like I said, the, if you look at the migration, so uh, more females migrated between rounds than males, uh, but around 72% were tracked by the surveyors. Okay, so the, these are my main variables. The dependent variable is married between round and early marriage. So it's uh, just one zero one if marital status is 2012 in, um, uh, is, is married and uh, marital status in 2012 is unmarried uh, equal to zero. Uh, we define early marriage as one if age at marriage is less than legal age, 18 for girls and 21 for boys, and zero if it is greater than equal to uh, legal age or unmarried. Um, so our main ex explanatory variable is crime against women reported by households at baseline. So the questions they, they were asked, how often are unmarried girls harassed in your village neighborhood? 
um, which is coded as zero for never and one for oftener sometimes. So we just we define it at neighborhood level by looking at um, the percentage of households who said yes um, oftener sometimes. Uh, so our empirical strategy is very simple. It's, uh, we run a linear probability model uh, where married dummy and early marriage dummy is the uh, dependent variable. And um, then uh, we, have, we also explore the mechanisms by estimating the relationship. I think that I'll, I'll explain that later on. So um, I'll go to the endogeneity. Uh, so um, so to, to tackle that, we try to tackle to some extent the endogeneity in the main um, dependent variable, which is crime against women, by aggregating. So it, it, it is possible that the households where um, there are more unmarried girls, they will t t tend to report uh, this thing, the harassment, of they will perceive the crime against women in the locality higher than those who do not have unmarried girls. So what we do, uh, we aggregate um, this crime, reported crime, uh, at village level, excluding the household's own perception. Um, and uh, yeah, and also we control additional household level characteristics to proxy conservative attitude of household. So this, these are our main equations. Um, yeah. So uh, okay, I'll just skip this. Uh, so this is the summary statistics. Uh, I will just summarize a few points. So we have, like I said, that uh, we have a tracking data that I have used. So we don't have information um, for the outcome variables for around 20% of the female sample. So I'll, I'll talk about that later. And around 47% of female in the sample were married between rounds, 15% had early marriage, and around 12.6% of households reported harassment of unmarried girls in the locality um, in 2004-05, and um, it actually increased in 2011-12 to 20%. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the main regression result, and um, you can see that uh, the gender specific crime, which is harassment of unmarried girls, is uh, significantly positively associated with uh, marriage decision between rounds as well as early marriage, and um, uh, all other crime rates remain insignificant, uh, which are basically gender neutral crimes. Uh, we also do it for uh, we in in this regression we include the sample male sample, yeah, um, yeah, and um, so we we have an interaction term. So this is on pooled sample, uh, and we find households perception of crime both gender neutral and gender specific uh, have no significant association with the marriage decision of boys. Um, so. So, so we explored the channels through which this relationship may hold. And uh, the first thing we look at is the stigma cost attached to the victim of sexual harassment. Um, and it could be that the cost is uh, higher in the marriage market. Uh, so this is one paper which is highlighted. This is a cross-country study of mate preferences. And it has highlighted that Indian men put more weightage on their spouse's uh, sexual purity at marriage uh, compared to their um, physical appearance. And this is compared to men from the rest of the world. Um, so in this context, I think that stigma cost would be higher in the marriage market and also in conservative society. So what we do, we conduct our analysis on two subsamples, so two sets of households. So one, sets of, uh, one set of households where um, this conservative practice of parda or ghungat, uh, this is a practice where women cover their face with a piece of cloth um, from outsider, generally from men. Um, so so, so we, we, we have that information whether the households practice this um, conservative ritual or not. Um, so we use that as a proxy to separate out uh, households who, uh, that are conservative and the households which do not have this practice. And we run our regression 
uh, for both sets of households. And we also look at northern region and southern region separately because uh, in the literature uh, on gender inequality in India, it's established that um, northern regions are more patriarchal. So southern region, the states in southern, re uh, southern region are um, more uh, gender egalitarian. So this is already established. So that's why we do this. Uh, we do we conduct our analysis separately for northern region and southern region. And we also look at concern for well-being. So it could be that the households are, um, yeah. So it, it could be that the households are uh, also concerned about the well-being of uh, their daughters. So that's why they try to um, marry them off. Uh, to a different neighborhood than their own where they think that uh, the, uh, there's more crime. So that's what we do. We explore by investigating whether households with higher perception of crime marry their daughters off outside the village or town. Um, so so to just to give you the main result from the first channel that you can see that we find, uh, I'll use this, yeah. So we, uh, you can see that we find that this uh, crime against women is significant for the conservative households practicing Parda and for the households uh, living in northern region. And we do not find uh, any significant association for the other sets of households. Uh, coming to the second channel, uh, we, we, we see, it. so we done another regression to uh, look at whether the households who perceive that uh, their locality is not safe, they are marrying their daughters off to a, a different, com different village, okay? And uh, that's what we find, that crime against women is significant, significantly associated uh, for uh, marriage outside the village. Yeah, so we have also done some uh, robustness check and gen uh, the results remain the same. So I don't have enough time. So I'll just uh, go to the sample attrition. Um, so as I mentioned that we have around 20% uh, for 20% uh, sample. We do not have the information about marriage. Uh, so uh, we try to uh, look at this by testing, uh, estimating an attrition equation where sample attrition is the dependent variable. So it could be basically what we try that um, whether these sample dropouts are non-random and are from high crime or low crime localities as compared to the sample included in the analysis. So that's what we try to test. Okay. Um, so we just run um, an attrition equation where sample attrition is the dependent variable and we regress it in all, um, on all the explanatory factors that are included in our main regression. And then, uh, the results show that none of the crime variables is significant, so we just this, we, 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 we take it that probably it's unlikely that the, uh, there is selection based on crime. Yeah, so I will just conclude. So what we find, we find that households' perception about crime against women significantly increases the likelihood of marriage and early marriage of young girls. And we do not find any link between perceived crime in the locality and the marriage decision of young boys. And uh, we also do not find any link between perception of other gender neutral crimes such as robbery and theft. Um, so when we, we look at the mechanisms, um, it suggests that this relationship depends on the extent to which the conservative gender norms are practiced and female chastity is valued uh, in, this, in the society. Uh, okay, so I'll just stop here.